Hey beautiful saints, it is really humid here. I hope you're enjoying the early summer. My son said that uh, summer just came by and kicked spring's butt and said you're out of here. We, had it, we didn't get anything except like freezing cold and then 93 degrees. It was like 41 a couple weeks ago and then by the end of the week it was 93 and humid. It was absolutely crazy. But I hope you guys are enjoying it. This is just a reminder that uh, I'll be on Talking Doctrines channel with Brother Matthias, and I'm not sure who else, maybe Brother Bill, Brother Luke, I'm not certain, but I'm going to post the link for the Hangout. There'll be a live chat and everything there. Uh, Matthias and I had decided it would be 8, but I think he's got 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I think in England it's five hours ahead, so like in London, if it's uh, 5 here, it'll be 10 p.m. there, um, but uh, it'll be between 8 and 8.30, just check. I'm going to check in with him. He has 8.30 on his thing, but uh, just to be certain, check in at 8. Uh, the name of it is going to be like, everyone lives however they want, uh, because there's a lot of people saying, you know, you can't live however you want and think you're saved. Brother Luke said something really cool last night. He goes, I lived how I wanted to before I got saved, and I live how I want to after I got saved. But the difference is, I want different things now. And uh, I truly believe that many people look for the outside fruit, and and there should really be looking for the inside, you know. But we shouldn't be looking for it in each other. We should be looking for it within ourselves, you know, to see if we're walking uh, in the spirit, walking in that spirit. It's very easy to be pulled back over into ego in the flesh. Uh, also, they might be casting out a demon python spirit from me. <laughs> you know, because I'm in a witchcraft coven and I got a promotion for preaching a false gospel, apparently. <laughs> but I, I don't have a python demon, but I got the spirit of Monty Python. But I don't want that cast out because then I can't run around saying, me anymore. You know, it just sucked the fun out of everything. But in any case, we're probably going to be discussing some of that silliness as well. Some of the ridiculous uh, things that people say about each other in the body of Christ. It's just, you know, if I wasn't uh, strong in my faith and knew how good God really is and how much Jesus loves us all, I'd run from Christianity based on how uh, those proclaiming Christ treat each other. And that's why Paul and James and John are always reminding us you know, to, to love one another. So others, especially unbelievers, can see it. But also, babes in Christ, can you imagine, uh, my son's aunt was on here, and she, she was just sick of it. She was sick of people just beating me down. I don't lift myself up. I am just, I'll repeat this, I am just a sister in Christ. I am just a sheep. That's why my little thing is beep, beep, I'm a sheep. I'm always telling, I'm just a sister, sharing what I've learned. Uh, I do my best to show you the context of what and why I believe verses say what they say based on the context and show it to you and always advise anyone to always take whatever I say and anyone says against uh, the word of God, rightly divided. Uh, what I've always preached is to look to Christ and him crucified only. Uh, the one that died for our sins, bore our sins in his body and then rose again. For our justification. Uh, see, if we if we add anything to that, we're really not trusting Christ and therefore not believing the gospel. But when they say easy believism, uh, there is nothing to add to believing on what Jesus did apart from your works, your faithfulness, what you're doing, cleaning up your life, giving your life to God. Those are all great things, but they don't save and you can't add it. And it really does insult the work of Christ when we add to it. And so, you know, the silly straw man argument about living any way you want and doing, you know, be a serial killer and all. You know, I, most people are not serial killers before they get saved. Uh, and certainly not after. Uh, but it does say in scripture, let none of you suffer as a murderer. And we know David, who was a man after God's own heart, committed adultery, knocked up the lady, Uriah Hittite, the Hittite was one of his best friends, but he had him murdered to cover up his own adultery. And the sword never left his house. That's, he wasn't lost, didn't lose salvation, 
uh, and he even says, you know, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Now, that was before the Holy Spirit indwelled within us. It would rest upon a person. But he didn't want to walk in the flesh. He wanted the Spirit. And uh, all of us should desire that. But what I see the difference is, you can't tell an unregenerate person to desire the things of God. They're not capable of it. They must be saved first. And it says in Ephesians that in whom we trusted, we heard the gospel of our salvation, we believed it, and we were sealed by that Holy Spirit of promise, understanding what he accomplished. Most people don't understand the doctrine of imputation. And that's why they mix up their own righteousness with God's. And they just can't rest in Christ because they thought oh, that's too much freedom. It's just somebody accused me today, you just preach it, it's too easy to sin. But the strength of sin is the law. I had another uh, gentleman send me a message. He was in the 70s as well. It's amazing I'm getting a lot of the older people uh, that grew up in religious bondage coming and saying, because you explained, you know, and it's not just me. I, other viewers help too. I'm not just taking credit for this. Just they uh, realize the grace that we preach, the love of God, actually they have more of a desire. He said that I now, I have a desire to abstain from these sinful things now. It's not way more than any legalism and condemnation did because all that did was focus on the problem. It focused on us and our righteousness instead of focus, focusing on Christ and what he accomplished for us and who we are in him. You know, we realize we're a child of the king and we should act like royalty. It's that simple. I think a lot of people are confused by the shoulds and musts, and those need to be divided. Uh, but we, we don't add anything. To you. you can mock it, make fun. That's fine. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Where's the power of God unto salvation? It's not after man. It's not going to make sense to man, and none of it will make sense until the Holy Spirit's there. You know, once a person's received it and put their trust fully on what Jesus did. I mean, flat out saying no matter what, my pastor likes to say, Jesus does all the saving. He gets you saved, and he keeps you saved. It's his faithfulness. He began a good work, and he's going to finish it. And, and that's what we trust. God, our Redeemer liveth. We trust in him. He redeemed us. He has paid a price for us. We are bought with a price. We are his. Now, I'll do a video a little later. The gentleman that had gotten went to witchcraft because he had, I've told you, I get a lot of these where people are either on the verge of suicide or just giving themselves over to the devil completely because the standards of having to stop your sin before you can even get saved is ridiculous. And, and, it, and it just frustrates people that realize their mouths have been stopped by the law and they realize how much they fail. Uh, the problem is most people just have not become guilty before God. In my flesh dwells no good thing. You cannot please God in your flesh. It's impossible. There's nothing you can do to please God. You must trust that he has redeemed you, that what he did saved you. I've said before, God doesn't save people trying to be saved. He saves people trusting that he already has saved them because that is the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the ministry of reconciliation. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are perfected forever and justified of all things. So I pray you guys grow in grace, and hopefully I will see you tonight. Again, I'll post that link um, below here. And uh, you Monty Python fans, don't lob your holy hand grenades at me until you count to three. Not to two, unless thou proceedeth to three. All right, God bless.